under our first module, again, which is called creating a high performance, which is what you do first in corporate, right? You build your team, right? I don't know how many of y'all have been, been at this level or not, but if you have, feel free to speak up because I'll share my experiences. So this will make sense, but I also need you to share your experiences. If you've been down this route before, you know, running a project, uh, within creating a high performing team with the course content, the first thing you do is build your team. Duh, that makes sense, right? It didn't used to say that <laughs> with the old exam. The next thing you want to do is define team rules. Cause once you get a group of people together, you need some rules in place. If you're autocratic and working by yourself, that's easy. But just because you think you're cool, everybody else doesn't. So there has to be team ground rules amongst 15, 20 people. Then you start wanting to negotiate project agreements. Well, what type of agreements? We'll get to that in a second. Uh, you as a servant leader and as a transformational leader that's over that project, you want to empower your team and the stakeholders along with it. We'll talk about the distinction between those. And there's not, well, then you want to train your team members and your stakeholders, you meaning you, the project manager. Then you want to gauge and support virtual teams, which we've already done now because of COVID, right? Uh, and then your job is to also build a shared understanding about whatever project that you're governing or being a servant leader too, right? So this is our module and these are the topics under that module, There's seven of them. Everybody heard of the Agile Manifesto? We're all familiar with that? Yes, no? No. No? Uh, okay. It, it's when a... you sent it. <laughs> I mean, I looked at it, so like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, so yesterday I knew about it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> So what they, this was the actual document that was developed, I think back in man, early 2000, something like that. Anyway, it was really written by software developers. And the way, the reason why they did that, and we'll cover a little bit more about it, but now I just want to get you up to speed real quick on, on some, on some of the highlights because the traditional, right. Traditional project management just didn't work for them. And, and I understand why, and it makes perfect sense. In, especially in terms of software development, anything that's knowledge oriented or knowledge base oriented, and there's constant change, you know, because they can't, I mean, are, it's easy to, to install servers. It's easy to in, install a sand base, right? It's easy to install, you know, uh, an upgrade to SAP. You know, you know what you need to do. You, you got your sandbox and everything else. You, those things have to be installed. Uh, but developers, it's almost uh, intuitive. So they came up with a concept that has manifested itself now. We, you know, we've heard of Scrum, right? And some of these other uh, frameworks. Well, they came up with a set of, they're not rules, they're open-ended, but what they set up was a welcoming of change. That's why you always hear, you'll start hearing anyway, because it'll come across your desk a lot. Uh, the agile mindset, right? And agile is really a framework well, it starts with this document. So we're going to read through this. I'm going to ask, ask each team to read a portion of it out loud. And then that'll start us off with the mindset. Right after this, I'm going to bring up a short document that I'll, I sent you as well that has the agile. Well, I'm going to do Scrum first, the Scrum process. And then we're going to look at the agile process. Just This is just an overview of what that is still project management, but an adaptive project management framework goes through to get a product out the door. I guarantee, well, each one of us are holding one of those now, and that's the software that's in our phones, right? When the phones first came out, if you look at your phone, it didn't have all this stuff in there. I remember my phone, well, yeah, I'm a little older probably, but text talk, that's all I even use today. But if you look at your phone now, all this stuff that's in there, it was developed using these frameworks. Traditional uh, project management does not work that way. That's why you get so many updates on your phone so quickly. That's why Netflix 10 years ago does not look like it looks now or eight years ago. Doesn't look like it looks now. Now Netflix is almost telling you, Kevin, you like, you like to watch these type of movies. They got algorithms built there in the, back there in the back at Netflix that keeps track of, you know, the type of movie, the type of movies you look at and it suggests there's a 98% chance that you like this movie and 98% of chance it's right. Well, that came from this type of mindset is listening at the customers and making constant changes, right? 
And again, I brought the blockbuster thing for a reason. Yes, it was a company, but they did things one way and stuck to that way. Well, Netflix was like, no, we can do this better. And that's why blockbuster, well, it doesn't exist in my area anyway. But remember what Nokia, the phone system, the, the phones back when it first, Nokia, well, they got waxed. I mean, look how, look how things are now. Uh, we, we can think of a lot of industries. You know, I mean, look at Amazon, FedEx and, and UPS. I mean, you, I, I see the postman maybe once a week now. Don't need them. No offense, but there's too much stuff out there now. Amazon have their own warehouses now. I mean, some huge warehouses. You've seen them. I mean, they have their own system. Why? They're listening at the customer. That's what the Agile Manifesto is about. Listening at the customer. So let's get started with that. All right. So I'm not going to read it. Team one, someone over there. Either one, take uh, the first four, what you're looking at here. These are called the Agile Values. So the Agile Manifesto, again, created by software developers, but now you, they're using it. We're using it in other industries other than software development. That's why it's becoming so prominent now. Why? Because it's customer oriented. Okay. And the traditional way of not listening at the customer, we don't welcome change. We don't want change. You said you wanted a car and that's all you're going to get is that car. Well, it doesn't work anymore. Right. This mindset opens the door for new opportunities, listening at the customer, increasing value, delivering value early to the customer. That's what the, this mindset is about. So team one, the values, there's four of them. Why don't you guys take this and read that for the rest of the I'll group. take it. So the first value is individuals and interactions over processes and tools. The second value is working software over comprehensive documentation. The third value is customer collaboration over contract negotiation. And the last Wait. fourth one is responding to change over following a plan. That is where well, there is value in the items on the right, we value the items on the left more. Exactly. And I'm losing my... Now, if you look at this, is, is it still on your, do you have this back? There we go. What's on your screen? There we go. And uh, Agile Manifesto. Okay. Now, uh, what she just read in the end, while we value the items on the right, uh, the values on the left are more important, or that's what the manifesto is around. So if you look at it, it says individuals and interactions. That's what the Agile Manifesto is with Scrum and everything is about over processing tools. Everything that we've looked at so far in this uh, course content is about what processes and tools. We haven't even gotten to the process and tools yet. And it's already heavy into it. So it says, eh, we rather interact every day, you know, with individuals. That's where the term product owner and, and, and deal with the customer on a daily basis comes in with, with the agile framework. Oh, it prefers working software over comprehensive documentation. Up to now, we just got started with all of uh, with our course content and already we've produced what? A stakeholder register. We haven't got to the charter yet. Uh, a racy chart. And we haven't even gotten started yet. We've produced three or four documents. And we so the traditional, there's nothing wrong with it now. It's, it's appropriate in, 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 a lot of, in a lot of cases. But there are a lot of cases that it's not appropriate. And it's why you see such a manifestation in customer growth in some of these industries like Amazon and Netflix, right? Oh, by the way, Amazon has like 3,200 scrum teams worldwide. Think about that. That's amazing. 3,200 scrum teams worldwide. That's how many Amazon has. Uh, customer collaboration. Again, work with the customer over contract negotiation. In other words, fiddling around for days at a time over, no, we're not going to do this. Yes, we're going to do that from a traditional standpoint. No, they collaborate with the customer, meaning the adaptive frameworks. Res here's the key, responding to change over following a plan. If you look at that, if you look at the, uh, that process chart that I gave you over in the uh, planning group, you know, you got your initiating, initiation, you got your planning, you got your uh, executing. When the planning, they have like 
what, 26 processes over there. So there's a lot of planning being done on the traditional side. And there's nothing wrong with that, depending on the type of product or, or project. Okay. So what I was telling you, yeah, we value the items on the right more. Well, that's what the adaptive systems are about. Okay. Okay. So the Agile Manifesto is made up of four values, but also 12 principles. All right, here they are. Team two, you take the first four principles. Somebody in team two or the whole team, I don't care. I can read them. Okay, first principle. Our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. Welcome changing requirements, even late in development. Agile processes harness change for the customer's competitive advantage. Deliver working software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months with a preference to the shorter timescale. And the fourth one is business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. Anybody noticing a theme here with these values and principles? Doing what the customer wants. Yeah, doing what the customer wants. Okay. Uh, the, where's the next four? Let me see. One, two, three. Somebody in team two, take the next four, starting with build projects, I think. Yeah. No, hold on. Team two or three? Team two. I'm sorry. Starting here with build projects. Take the next four. Okay, I can, I can take it. So build projects around motivational individuals, motivated individuals, and give them the environment and support they need, and trust them to get the job done. The next one is the most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within a development team is face-to-face -face conversation. And then working software is the primary measure of progress and agile processes promote sustainable development. The sponsors, developers, and users should be able to maintain a constant pace, pace indefinitely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. If you look at the first four principles, it was talking about what the customer, oh man, the customer matters. The only thing that matters is the customer. The second one is to start talking about the team that's actually doing it, right? They must be able a sustainable Great. And one important principle is working software is the primary measure of progress, not how much work you've done, all this stuff we keep up with Microsoft Project and Primavera. You know, what percentage of work is done here? What percentage of work? Oh, you're late on this. No. Is it working? Are we delivering value? See how the mindset is totally different than what we're, and both of them are equally important. It's just that one applies to a certain set or types of projects and the traditional applies to certain types of projects. It's just easier. And I understand that makes perfect sense why these uh, software developers went off somewhere in Utah, I think, and developed this manifesto. And it has really grown, right? Uh, team three, take the next four. I think it starts with, uh, yeah, right here. I'll take it. Right. Um, Continuous attention to technical excellence right. and good design enhances agility. Simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. The best architectures, requirements, and designs emerge from self-organizing teams. And at regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective and tunes and adjusts its behavior accordingly. Absolutely. Now it's talking about effectiveness, right? And the weirdest one when I first got into this was this one, simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work not done. I'm like, what does that mean? I mean, I, that, that got me for a second, but I understand it. It makes perfect sense. In Kanban, uh, if you're even looking at the Kanban board, uh, it has a, a column up there called work in progress. Well, in Kanban, they wanna minimize work in progress. They, uh, in Kanban, that methodology, uh, it kind of states and, and, and leads you down the road of, if you got a whole bunch of work in the work in progress column, not a lot of work is gonna get done. And analytically, there's a video out there that I've looked at several times. It actually proves that all this interchangeable part, too much work, everything going on. But if you do one or two things at a time, 
you get more work done. So that's what that means. Max the art of maximizing the amount of work not done. Okay. So this should give you an idea of the month when it says agile mindset, when you start hearing it moving forward because it's been introduced. That's what they mean. Customer first interactions and individuals over processes and tools, the customer first effective team. And one thing uh, it says on this one right here says the most effective and efficient method of conveying information to and within a development team is face to face conversation. So this is all written before COVID. It's not impop. It's not possible much anymore. But one of the agile or agile frameworks concept is the development team, including the agile coach or scrum and scrum master or whatever. They're all co they're all located in the same room in the same vicinity. Now all the everything is pro or pre uh, COVID, right? So everything on your exam is going to be pre COVID. So. Take these, take this mindset and this, this manifesto is going to come up in your agile practice guide, which is part of your PMBOK. This is in there, right? So again, I'm going to repeat this again, read that agile practice guide because the mindset of some of these questions or a lot of these questions are going to be on your exam, right? So that's the agile manifesto. It kind of puts you in the mindset customer first, we welcome change even at the last minute. If you worked on a traditional project, which most of us have, most of us have, that's the last thing we want. You do not want somebody coming up the last hour saying, oh, I want wings on this car. The other side of the house is it welcomes change. So start thinking in that mindset. It's almost the opposite. So whatever we thought of or done in traditional project management, it's the total opposite uh, under the agile frameworks, Scrum, Kanban, and, and the like. Okay. So now that we got a, a, an overview or a feel for uh, the agile mindset, which covers most of the frameworks as well, let's take a look at how those teams are comprised. Okay, roles on an agile project, right? So, and it's pretty much the same on Scrum. Uh, you have your product owner, and you can read these, you know, as, as we go forward. You have the product owner, all right? This represent that that person represents the customer. Okay, just don't know this, and, and now we're going to look at the process in a second. You have the product owner, that person represents the customer base, whoever that is. Remember that change that keeps coming in and out of whatever we're building, like Netflix. Somebody wanted some algorithm that, that tells you, you know, what percentage of the time that you'll like a movie. Somebody asked for that. Some one of us, a customer, asked for that, right? Or else they wouldn't have built it, right? The the or the, the categories uh, gives you the opportunity. I'm just talking about Netflix because most of us look at that. It gives you the option to actually uh, pin one of your movies to, to put on your watch list. Like, I don't wanna look at it now, but I don't wanna go back and search for it either. So you can pin it, put it in your watch list and you'll get back to it later. Somebody asked for that and they listened, right? So everything that you see in Netflix, we asked for and they put it there. So I look at my Netflix screen, you know, five, six years ago, it looks totally different now, but I like it now. And it gives me pretty much everything I want. I wish they'd get rid of, you gotta pay this month every month. They can get rid of that, then we, they'll be on to something. But anyway, product owner, and then you have your agile project team. These are people that actually do the work. So think in terms of programmers or developers, that's them. And then you have what you call the agile project manager. Sometimes it's called the scrum master or agile coach. That's us, right? So you got your product owner, the person that represents, and it could be one or two, that represents the user base or customer base. You have your agile project team, and then you have your agile pro project manager or scrum master or agile coach. Okay. That's it. The same thing applies for scrum and the other frameworks like uh, Kanban and the rest of them, they're similar in type, right? These, these, this team is normally three to nine members. That's it. And they're all located in the same, not same building, but in the same room. 
in theory. Okay, so now that we know what the team looks like, let's take a look at an actual process. We'll take Scrum first because it's easier. Okay, is that clear? Yes. Yep. No, I mean, can you see the picture? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I didn't mean, is that clear? Like Pops would say. Uh, so <sighs> spreadsheets, Gantt charts, think of traditional project management, right? Anybody ever seen a Gantt chart or know what it is? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, yeah. It's, you know, that's where you keep all your tasks, right? Yeah. So, oh, by the way, that Gantt chart, that is not called a project plan. It's called a project schedule. People get that mixed up way too much. That is not a project schedule. It's, I mean, it's not a project plan. It's just a schedule. Anyway, that stuff, right? That's everything that, that your team's gonna be working on. You got your percentage, whatever, you know, percentage of work. Then you got your, your actual task, you know, and they're, they're numbered and indented and all this stuff. Then you got your start date or start time or start date, end date. Then you got the resource whether it be a person or equipment or whatever, right? All that's on that little page, on that little frame, right? Well, with the adaptive or agile scrum kind of they have what they call a, pro a backlog, right? And I'm gonna take a step back and cover backlog in a second. Just think of the backlog as this one, an entire wall, right? With a bunch of, bunch of little white sticky papers on it, right? And we're going to organize or prioritize those little sticky papers. Those little sticky papers represent, represent what we call user stories. I'm going to look at a video on that in a second. But just picture all that. We're going to take this process and then we're going to backtrack what each individual component means. So just think of this big wall with a prioritized list of stuff. All right. So uh, let's let's use our phones since we all got have one. All right. So we got all these phone features sitting up here. Right. First, we got to build the phone. Let's, let's say the casing is already built, then the stuff that goes inside the phone. So first, out the gate up top is we want to be able to do what? Just talk. So we want to put that feature into the phone first. Everybody follow? Yes, yes. no, maybe? Yes. Sleep already? Yeah. So the first feature out of the product backlog will be the talking, right? So. Well, text and talk. We'll, we'll take the first two user stories, All right? Text and talk. So we put this into our sprint planning meeting. Okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do text and talk, All right? So now it's in our little sprint backlog. So this particular sprint on sprint one, we're going to do text and talk for our phone, okay? So the team is going to build what they, you know, the, remember those, the, the uh, agile team, scrum team, the little developers, they're working, right? And you're holding what they call scrum meetings. You hold those meetings 15 minutes a day, every day. So every day, you, agile coach, scrum master, agile project manager, whatever you want to call yourself, you hold 15 minute meetings every day with your with that little six person team. By the way, you don't dictate to that team. Again, this is not autocratic. They're self-organizing, self-directing team. That's the difference between adaptive framework and uh, traditional. You leave them alone. You have one job, and that's this. Well, actually, you have more than one job, but your main job is to hold that daily meeting. In that meeting, you ask the question, what has been done? They're going to tell you. Next question is, what will be done? I mean, what are you going to be working on next? And then the main question where, where you come in at, Agile Coach, Scrum Master, is what are the obstacles that are in your way? Your primary job in the adaptive framework is to remove obstacles. Hence, goes back to what we talked about this morning, servant leadership. That's what this is about, servant leadership. You're removing all obstacles. You're wiping the kids' nose, fixing their lunches, whatever they need to get done, you do it so that what? They can keep working, okay? Okay, so they're working, working, working. 
right? So they, they built the, the talking part of the phone, right? So they got a, we have a product. We can talk on the phone. We have next is what we call a sprint review. So in this sprint, now we've done text and talking, right? So we, we, we have a product now. We got a phone with text and talk in it. So now we're going to go and show it to the customer. It's called a sprint review, meaning we're going to review what's done in that sprint. In other words, this is our little, uh, we'll call it display or, or we're going to activate whatever we've done and show it to the customer. Okay. So sprint review. So the customer looks at it and gives you feedback, right? Well, they like it or not. We document all this stuff and then we take our team, only the team, and we do what we call a sprint retrospective. Same thing as a lessons learned. And I think uh, uh, somebody said they call it different in uh, six eight green with the green belt. So sprint retrospective figured out what we did wrong in this sprint and what we could improve on. Normally it's around velocity. In other words, how, how quick we can put some out. So now we go back around and circle again, pull two more items out of the product backlog. Other than text talk, what else is on your phone? Give me, give me two items on your phones that you want next other than text talk pictures email camera again? Email. yeah okay good one. camera and yeah. something yeah all right so we're going to yank those off now we're going to build the camera and whatever else you guys said that those two uh features right so we have a little meeting on how we're going to do that you know it's called a sprint planning meeting okay now we're camera and whatever else we said i couldn't make out the last one so now we're going to uh, kick the team off the developers. They're going to start working on the camera and the other item, right? You're going to hold your daily 50, you know, and normally these little sprints that they're working, they're normally last between two to four weeks. So everything is time boxed. Everything is time boxed. This thing here is sprint planning meeting. This might be four hours time boxed. Then when we actually work on the product, it's between two to four weeks. That's what is why it's called a sprint. So it's going to take us two to four weeks to do the camera and uh, the calendar, which we'll is say the calendar because I didn't hear the other thing. We're going to put that in the phone. So we're going to add that on top of text talk. So now in this sprint, we're working on camp camera and calendar. So you hold your 15 minute meeting every day for those two to four weeks in the same question. What has been done? What you're going to work, work on next? And then what obstacles in your way are in your way? So again, they are a self-organizing, self-directing team as developers, but you remove any obstacles out of the way. And you repeat this cycle for two to four weeks until you finish with the camera and the calendar. Once you finish with the ca camera and the calendar, it becomes a product. You bring in the customer, let them take a look at it. It's called the sprint review. It's called something different than agile, but it's sprint review, meaning you're demonstrating the product, then the customer take a look at it. They say, oh, yeah, we like it. We really like it. If they really like it, then you add it over to text talk. Now, they did like it, but at the same time, there's probably some stuff you could do better. So right after they sign off on the criteria saying, oh yeah, we like that. So now you got text talk, calendar, and camera, right? See how we're incrementally building this product? Now we're gonna go back and say, okay, on this sprint, that we built the camera and the calendar, what do we do wrong? Or, you know, or what can be improved? We document that for the next iteration. Now we're gonna pull off two more uh, features out of what we call the product backlog. So somebody give me two more. I'm gonna go through this thing one more time. Give me two, what else we wanna add to the camera, I mean, to the phone? Internet. Internet, inter okay, internet and... Uh, Games. Say again. Apps. Okay. All right. So we're going to pull these two things off. We're going to have a meet about them. So this meet could be, you know, could be a day, could be four hours, you know, whatever amount of time that, you know, that gives us enough information to move forward. All right. So this is you and the product team and the development team. So now that's in the sprint backlog. So this sprint, we're doing the internet, and uh, I don't know why I can't ever remember the second item that you guys said. But anyway, definitely internet, All right? So 
it's going to take us two to four weeks to add that feature to the phone. So for two to four weeks, we're going to meet every day for 15 minutes. Oh, by the way, these meetings are stand up meetings, no sitting down. Why is that important? A, it's to get you in and out of there. So you won't stay more than 15 minutes. You sit down, you're going to start goofing off and it's going to be longer than 15 minutes. That's why the Agile Manifesto is a mindset. These rules and regulations are mindset. You really have to get into that mindset to do this. And I've done it before. And I'm pretty sure somebody else has it too, because I heard about an epic super user here. But that's a mindset. All right. You ask those three questions and you get out of there. Right. In addition to that, by just uh, having a 15 minute meeting, it gives them more time to do their work. You, you've been in traditional project management. Those things can go on for hours. And I mean hours. I've been in them before. I tried to cut them short. Didn't work. You know, not every time, but these mindset, right? So you keep working for two to four weeks, building, adding in the internet. All right. And we got a product. Oh, now we got internet capabilities. We let the user or the end user, the customer base, look at it. In this case, it's us. We look at the phone. Oh, man, we like that. Okay, cool. It works. We got that set up. It becomes part of the final product. Now we got text, talk, calendar, camera, and then we got internet access on our phone. We're incrementally building our product. And this thing could never stop. You can go on forever. Remember Netflix. Netflix just started out looking at movies. Now look at the thing. Look at it's, what it's turned into. And it's still evolving. It's incrementally being built through an iterative fashion. Iterative meaning just over and over and cycle after cycle, right? That's why you saw that one of those principles, the developers and the team should be able to maintain a, a sustainable pace forever. In other words, there's no 90 hour work weeks because iterative, we're constantly kicking out new features and functions. Okay. All right. So yeah, they like the internet piece, but in that sprint, while we're building the internet piece, what do we, what can we improve, improve on, right? What can we do better? What went wrong? All right. So you document that stuff and take that into the next sprint pull off two more uh, uh, features and work on those. So that's it in a nutshell. So you got your product backlog, which is a big wall of yellow stickies of prioritized features. That's the way I want you to look at it. Just big old wall of yellow stickies with prioritized features called user stories. We'll take a look at what that is in a second. We as a team, you as a leader, uh, you hold the, you pull off, oh, I didn't hear someone ask the question. Well, who, who determines whether we want the internet and whether we want the text talk? Well, the product owner, the customer, they determine what gets worked on. We as a team, we tell them, okay, it's going to take us nine weeks to get that done. Okay, I don't want nine weeks. I want something else. Well, then you probably have to take some off, you know, take off, you know, some of your features, All right? That's how you negotiate that. So the product owner tells us what to work on. The team the developers say, okay, it's going to take this long and this, this is our estimation. And you lead them daily. Build the product, have the customer look at it. If they like it, it goes in a stack of, of a final product. We take a look at what we did wrong, many lessons learned, in this case, a retrospective, and carry it over to the next sprint. Does this cycle make sense? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, for, for it to be just introduced to you, by the way. Yes. Yes. And is it is it correct um, if we're thinking about the customer or the product owner? Would that be more of like a focus group? Because obviously we're it not can be. everybody every time. It I'm it can be. My brain around it. It can't. Whoever wants whatever it is you. Be, it, I mean, I, we just pick phone because it's easy. We all got one, right? And I've always wondered where all this stuff come from on my phone because I don't use it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it comes from the. Well, I'm not the only customer. Right. Literally, I text and talk. That's it. I'm <laughs> <laughs> now, my kids do everything, you know, but they're grown, but they're young. They come in a different generation. Right. But when you mentioned about the focus group, the customer, the customer base could be in. It doesn't matter. It it does matter. It depends on what they want. The people you're talking about, they want something. Right. Okay. So. In this case, it's us on the phone. So we want a phone, a functional phone, your group. It can actually. Yes, it can be a focus group. Customers. Okay. Just customers. You know, awesome. That's all. That's that's how all this stuff comes about. You know, I'm looking at a satellite. I'm sitting in my home office. I'm looking at a satellite. Well, somebody asked. Well, we asked for it. 
not directly, but it's there. They went right. through these, I'm building the thing, you know? Very cool. So this, Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> oh, no problem. So this is the found, well, you're going to see a lot of this. Now, this, this, a lot of questions, I'm telling you, with the servant leadership concept uh, and the agile manifesto, and it's not going to, you know, not going to have to memorize the four values and the 12 principles. Just read them over a couple of times throughout your study process and make, okay, that makes sense to me. All you got to do is think of Netflix and Amazon. Where did all that stuff come from on those screens? It come from this, listening at the customer. It's a customer mindset, right? So knowing I, that, uh-huh. I have a question. On, sure. So with the, with the scrum process, you know, I, I see the sprint says one to four weeks. Is uh -huh. this... Is this process or, you know, the scrum, the scrum process, is this dependent on just time frame? So you said earlier, you know, that like, let's say the customer said, well, nine weeks is too long. I mean, is that, is, is that basically, oh. is the scrum process just a one to four week type of thing? Yeah, that's quick. It, it, it is post. It, it, yeah. Everything is time box. Right. So, and here's what I mean by that. Every environment is different. That's the other thing. The enterprise, you know, inter uh, enterprise environmental factors, they still apply in traditional and adaptive, right? So uh -huh. one, co one company might say, well, we don't want four week sprints. We want 10 weeks. Now it's beyond the, you know, suggested time frame. but if that's what that company wants, <laughs> that's what that company wants. These are frameworks and standards and suggestions. And you, you probably wonder where this stuff comes from. Well, just like PMI, came up with PMP and PMI ASIC. Well, the Scrum stuff came from Scrum Alliance. That's another governing body, but it, it only focuses on Scrum. I got my son's Scrum certification maybe a year, and a year and a half ago. Well, that certification doesn't say PMI. It says Scrum Alliance. So Scrum Alliance also put out a set of standards. Theirs is called uh, SBOC or something like this, Scrum SP box, Scrum product body of knowledge so they have their own set of standards so that's where this these time boxed frameworks came from it came from them and again they're suggested time boxes okay makes sense because if it doesn't it, it's, it's, yeah i mean I, i'm just trying to get my head around it so like is there a particular thing that you can think of that says okay this you, you can you can use the scrum process for this oh yeah we just did the, the, the phone. Okay, that, that's what I'm wondering, like like projects like that. I mean, that's how you yeah. just go about saying that's what you're going to use. Yeah, and it's, okay. it's uh, and I was forced into it, right, uh, back in 2011, because it, again, I was working uh, between 2008 and 2014, I was working at Clark Atlanta, where we were doing, again, I told you about those projects, it was just, just the, the project was called Clark Atlanta University Process Renewal Initiative, Capri, right? But it entailed hardware installations, which was traditional. It also entailed software ins installation, which was just not software development, software installations. That's traditional. Okay, we, we can do this on day one, this on day two. Uh, hardware is very, that's, that's like building a house. That's uh -huh. traditional, right? But yeah. then we had to, when, we, when it came to re-engineering our processes that ran inside sort of like payroll or um, uh, student health services, uh, we had to do some scripting, right? And we had five or six developers on staff and then we had four or five consulting developers. This wasn't working for them. I'm trying to put them in a time box. Well, not a time box. I'm trying to put them on schedule, on, you know, on that, in that uh, Microsoft project. And they were like, well, this, this is not working. I mean, just because you finished with the hardware doesn't mean we finished doing this piece of it, right? They just got to be able to do their thing without yeah. you. Exactly. Okay, that that and, makes sense now to me. You, you, you're, you're just allowing them to do what they do. Yeah. And but under meeting, the, you're meeting under, 15 minutes and say, hey, what's going on? Under, okay. this under this framework and mindset. So I yes. end up having, to, I actually, me and another person went out and did some study. I had never heard of Agile until then. I just hadn't. I'm like, okay, this really isn't, I don't even like it the way we were rolling on. Like, this is just not working. So we started doing some investigating and came up with Agile. So we took a month and just, just two of us just studied agile. Oh man, this, this works for this particular, this works for, you know, we had like eight developers, you know, man, this works for them. So we brought them in and then we took it on as an organization 
well, not as a university, we ran the project ourselves. That's one reason why we got there so quick. We didn't have senior management in a, coming in there, snooping their noses, trying to direct us. That yeah. cut out a whole lot of stuff, right? So okay, we, were yeah. able to, we were able to adapt it pretty quick. So yeah, you've, it all, it just now clicked. So yeah. I, I completely okay. get it now. But it is a mindset, right? And I did skip in the beginning, I did skip a couple of those 15 minute daily meetings and stuff start falling apart, believe it or not. It start falling apart. So it definitely is a mindset and you have to stick to this, right? But Thank anyway, you. it's it, it's time boxed. Everything is time boxed. You know, three or four hours for this. This is definitely two to four weeks. And then your retrospect, your uh your sprint review is normally one hour for every week you spend building the thing, whatever the thing is you're building. So if you spent two out two weeks building something, you the sprint review should be two hours. And the same thing for the retrospective. So they're time boxing it. Yeah, you can go over and under, but that's that's another term that you're gonna start coming up on as we go through the course content. Time boxed. Okay. Okay. And agile is similar. So I'm not gonna go over agile today, but it's similar. But I wanted to get you kind of so every time you think of scrum and agile, think of this little circle right here. Time box. We're pulling stuff off the backlog, we're putting it in a sprint. Uh, sprint planning meeting and our sprint backlog, we start working, work, 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 show it to the customer. If they like it, it's fine. We still do a lessons learned or a retrospective, right? 